Ionic compounds, part two, metals and polyatomic ions. This is science 10, chemical reactions, video four. So you can find your polyatomic ions on your handout sheet, and they're right here. And we also have our cations, which are our metals, that are right down here, okay? You can find them on the other side, with our polyatomics are here, and our metals would be our lithium and all these would be metals that would be considered metals, but really only looking at these ones. Okay? Metals and polyatomic ions give us a metal and a polyatomic ion. Calcium carbonate would be an example of that. So calcium is Ca, and it has a charge of plus 2. Carbonate we can find on the sheet, and it's CO3 minus 2. Now, since it's a 1 to 1 ratio, I can just write Ca, CO3, because I have plus 2, minus 2, which makes 0. Lithium nitrate is another example. So lithium is my metal, nitrate is my polyatomic ion. So lithium is Li plus 1. Nitrate is NO3. Minus one. Again, they're balanced. Positive one, negative one. So I can just write L I N O three. So how do we do this? So here are the steps. First, we need to identify the charge of your metal and your polyatomic ion. So say I'm doing sodium and nitrate. So NO3. Well, I need to know the charge so I can look on my cation list. And it's positive 1. And my NO3 is negative 1. Well, my overall charge right now is positive 1, negative 1. So my correct formula, since it's a 1 to 1 ratio, is Na, NO3. And that's it. And then I could write the correct formula, word formula, which is sodium nitrate. Now remember, I can look right on that sheet that it's a handout of the representative periodic table of elements, and it tells me all the information I need. So let's do another example. Let's look at lithium and sulfate, so SO4. So I look on my sheet under my cations and lithium is plus one and sulfate is minus two. So they're not zero. I have negative two here, so I'm going to need positive two here. So that means I need two more. Okay? So I now can write Li2SO4. I also can write it in words lithium sulfate. And again, I can get sulfate right from the sheet, and I can get lithium right from the sheet. So my sulfate is my polyatomic ion. And my lithium is my cation. Let's do another example. Let's look at calcium and hydroxide. So calcium is plus 2. Hydroxide is negative 1. Well, which means I need more hydroxide. I actually need two more hydroxide. So I've got plus 2 and I need minus 2. 
but I can't just put the 2 there because that would mean I just have CaOH2. I just have 2 hydrogen, which is wrong. I have 2 hydroxides because the whole entire thing is worth negative 2, and I need 2 of the whole entire thing. So really, I need Ca bracket OH bracket 2. And that would be right. And what really comes down to it is here I have 1 Ca, 1 Ca. Here I would have 1 O, and here I have 2 O's, and that'd be oxygen. Here I have 1 H, or 2 H, 2 H's, and here I have 2 H's. So my number count for my total atoms for the top one is only 4, but I need to have my number count to be 5. Okay, so it's really important that if I need more of my polyatomic ion, I need more of all of it. And that's why my brackets are so important. So my word uh, formula would be calcium hydroxide. Again, I can get these right from the sheet. Okay. Next, we're going to look at boron and carbonate. So boron is plus 3, and carbonate is negative 2. So like we did today, we looked at blocks. So mind the drawings, because it's freehand. So we need a positive 3. So if we remember from today, our positive 3 at three mountains. And our negative two had spots for two of those. So therefore I need another B. And I need So that's one more, negative two, negative two, and I need one more. Negative two, so I've got a positive three, positive three. So I need to add up how many positive threes, and my overall would be positive six. My overall for my carbonate would be negative six. So I've made zero which is perfect. And now I know I need to have two boron and I need to have three carbonate. And I need the brackets because I need three of the whole thing. So I need B2 bracket CO3 bracket 3, which would be correct. If I don't use brackets, I get B2, CO3, and another little 3. And this 3 doesn't work. Okay? So we consider this wrong. So the brackets distinguish that I have 3 of this. So this really equals CO3, CO3, and CO3. So I have 3 of those. And I can write that as boron carbonate. Now, I can go from the other direction. I can go from a word formula to the chemical formula. So let's do an example. So let's look at magnesium sulfate. So we have Mg. 
and that's plus 2 because it's in group 2. And I have sulfate, which is SO4 minus 2. So, since I just need 1 and 1, I'm positive 2, negative 2, therefore I equal 0. Therefore, my formula is just Mg SO4 because it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, let's do another example. So we're going to look at boron, again, and carbonate. So boron is B, and it's plus 3. Carbonate, CO3, minus 2. So again, that means that I have, I need 3. So that's plus 3, minus 2. Means I need another minus two. But I'm still not balanced. So I put another plus three in there. So that means I need two of these. Again, brackets, because I need more than one. And that gets me three. So my formula is just B2CO3 bracket 